Hey nerds, what's up? Welcome to my first finalist reviews for SPFBO9. If you are here and you don't know what SPFBO is, I have a video for you, but essentially it is the self-published fantasy blog off, which is a competition run by Mark Lawrence to help give visibility to self-published fantasy authors. So today I'm doing three of our finalists. And before we jump in, I wanted to say something I find very interesting about the half of the books I've read. So I'm halfway through uh, the finalists right now. And I find that a lot of the books this year feel very specific in a way they didn't at least feel last year, where I'm like, oh, this is a specific niche that if you like it, you're gonna love it. If you don't, you might not. So I feel like all these books, whether or not they worked for me, I know exactly the kind of person that I would recommend them to, which I find really interesting. And I'm wondering, my little prediction is that we might have some very widely varying scores across a lot of these books because of that. So if you read them, I'd love to know if you're starting to feel that way as well. Maybe it's just like the first five I read. Who knows? We're gonna start with the first one I read, which was Cold West by Clayton Snyder. Now, Cold West is pretty small for a book, almost I would say novella length, especially considering fantasy and how used to long uh, we're used to them being. Uh, Cold West uh, is definitely a very grim, dark little novel. I will say Cold West has the best first page I think I've ever read from an SPFBO novel. That first page, man, it sets the tone. It sets exactly what's gonna happen, like set up exactly how you feel it's gonna happen, characterization, just excellent writing. In fact, that is that is the biggest thing that I really loved about Cold West was it was just so well written. Snyder really knew how to set atmosphere and tone and uh, even worlds building. I really loved how he just weaved in what you needed to know for such a short novel. I feel like I know a lot about the world with little to no info dumping. It, he did a very great job of just kind of pulling you along and setting it up. And I just thought that was done very well. The thing I probably struggled most with this book is just like how grim it is. It is too grim for me personally. It is, it is very dark. Now, so how am I gonna go in and judge that? For me, there were some extremely dark elements that really fit with the story that I felt made sense for the story and made sense for the plot and added to the book. And there were some grim elements that I questioned, why were they here? It feels like you just put that in to put it in. It ended up having no real say on the plot or the overall story. And those are the grim things that I struggle with the most. Because for example, the ending of this book is extremely grim, but I can't think of another ending. It it fit it so well. So for me, I that doesn't feel out of place. But when you just add, and I, I'm not gonna say specifically for spoilers, when you add extremely grim stuff and you're just like, why is that there? That's when I personally don't like it. I don't like reading a book that's just as dark as it can be for darkness sake, if it doesn't come around to inform a character or a plot in some way. And there were a few things in this novel that I didn't feel fit that personally. This book also has a lot of memories or flashbacks. And in some of these, I thought they were very relevant and good. And some of them, I really questioned why they were included. That becomes specifically important to me when the book is this small. In some ways, it felt like you either needed to take out some of those memories or make them way more relevant or add like 80 to 100 pages to this and make it more a full blown novel so that every moment that's not contributing isn't as big of a deal. But when it's this short and I had memories that I was like, what was the purpose of that? I wish there'd just been a clearer purpose to some of those uh, flashbacks. So overall, I thought this book had extremely strong writing. I think if you like dark settings, this is gonna work really well for you. I read it extremely quickly. It's very gripping. It did feel too grim for me at times, especially when I didn't feel like it was with the plot. And some of the memories I felt were a little meandering for a book this short and didn't contribute overall. So in the end, I rated Cold West a seven out of 10. Okay, next up is A Rival Most Vile by R.K. Ashwick. Now, I was very nervous <laughs> when this became a finalist because if you guys have been here, you'll know that I am not a romance reader. So I did a little research before starting this book because I look at this, first of all, I have to say, I do love this cover. This whole packaging is amazing. I know that's not what we're judging it on, but I just have to throw it out there because you know exactly what this book is about, right? This completely telegraphs to you what you're gonna get, which I always appreciate. Um, but I had to do a little research because I was like, I don't understand. Like I read the first chapter and I'm like, it's so obvious that the characters are gonna end up together. Like, 
it, it should it not be obvious? So I did a little poll on my Instagram and I was like, guys, help me out here. Tell me, tell me what I should know going into romance. And you guys delivered. You guys did such a good job. Uh, you guys talked about how, yeah, predictability is actually one of the things people like in romances. Like, that's the point. I'm going to read this real quick from Paula. Thank you. She said, you know, the main couple always end up together. The happily ever after is the golden rule of romance. The point then is the how. How do they end up together? What trials and tribulations do they have along the way? And if the writer is good, the character growth, the descriptions of customs and costumes, or the world building can be a treat for the reader, sometimes to really enjoy. As for the predictability of the happily ever after, some people need books that they know the end is going to be satisfactory sometimes, especially when you're feeling down or overwhelmed by life. You need a book that can lift you up. A couple other people also had great things to say about the romance genre for me that really helped me going into this book was to just remind myself, that's fine that there are predictable elements. You know they're gonna end up together. That's the point of romance. It is the how, how do you get there? So that kind of helped me recontextualize going into this romance since I don't normally read it, to let that part of me go because I think a lot of the kind of fantasy reading I do is all about like the mystery, the unraveling. And so I kind of just reset my expectations, which helped me enjoy this book so much more. Like, And, and I also wanted to rate it fair because I don't think it's fair to be like, I don't like romance. The point of SPFBO is to find excellent books within their specific genre or subgenre. So that's just a little, <laughs> was that too much background? That's what I did going into a Ramos file. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the first thing I'll say is that I really enjoyed the main character, Ambrose. I liked him a lot. He was very relatable to me in many ways. I thought he was really well characterized. I knew who he was. I knew what his journey was. And I was really rooting for him. Like I wanted him to be happy um, and, and succeed. So I really liked that part of this book. This book also has found family, which is a trope that I really enjoy. So I like that aspect of it. And I think the world building was perfect for what it was. It's not like, it's not necessarily uh, reinventing the wheel, but I think for the kind of story this is telling, I enjoyed it a lot, very happy. I think some of the ways I struggled with this book, it wasn't about the happily ever after, it was how they got there. I didn't feel as connected to the love interest, Eli. I thought he had some really good elements. In particular, I really liked Eli's storyline of trying to figure out what he wants to do in life and how he feels like a failure because he keeps starting and stopping things. I thought that was a very interesting personality trait to give him. It just didn't feel fully explored to me in a way that I would have liked. I wish it had come up in a more serious way. And, and the thing that I ended up thinking was, this book isn't a low stakes book, it's a no stakes book. I just felt like the problems were always solved so quickly. It was never more than a chapter or a couple of pages. And I feel like for me to up the tension in a book that I know will end happy, I do wanna see the our love interests work through some things. And it's not just that I don't like low stakes because I did read Legends and Lattes this year, which I wasn't expecting to like, ended up loving. And that's a super low stakes book. But I think the way that the relationships develop, it takes a long time to develop some of these things and to solve some of the issues. And I feel like that was missing in Arrival Most Vile for me. Additionally, I felt that I didn't quite, like understand how or why the two main characters got together. Now I am a fan of like Grump and Sunshine. I'm a huge Haikyuu fan, even though it's not a romance. I really love Keijiyama's and uh, Hinata's relationship. And so I liked the idea of it here, but there needs to be a little bit more. And so Ambrose, I felt like was a very deep character. He was a grump, but there was a lot going on. Eli, on the other hand, I never quite understood. Like he was the cheerfulness, but I just need a little bit more depth, I think, from Eli. And one thing I think how I'm gonna describe it is, usually when you think of a relationship building, you're thinking of a slope, right? It's, it's slowly building up. And these relationships felt more like stair steps where we were here and then suddenly we were here and I didn't quite understand how we got from point A to B. So we were rivals and now we're not, and now we're in a relationship. And I just wish it had been a little bit more not slow, because it's not like they get together super quickly, but just a little bit more reasoning. Like, how did we get from point A to B? And so I struggled with the relationship just because I wasn't really sure or felt like it was believable how it happened. I definitely preferred the first half of this book to the second half because of that no stakes. I felt because the stakes weren't ever super developed that the plot floundered a little bit in the last half where I felt like it was much stronger in the first half. So overall, uh, I really liked the main character. I think there was a lot of good elements here. As far as a romance, I honestly think a lot of people would really enjoy this, especially if you want something very low stakes, happy ending, two pretty lovable characters, especially if you like the grump and sunshine trope. 
I think a lot of people will really enjoy this. Uh, for the reasons I explained, there was I had a couple issues even going into trying to be understanding what romance is. So I'm going to give Arrival Most Vile 6 out of 10. And finally, the last book I'll be reviewing today is Hills of Heather and Bone by K.E. Andrews. Now, this book is definitely um, a more quiet book. It's definitely a more purpley prose book, a book that is about the journey of the characters. Like how I said, our other books feel very specific. We have like this grim dark. We have this very romance. This feels very specific in those kind of niche of quiet literary fantasy books that definitely won't necessarily appeal widely, but are really great for their specific niche. I also want to just say off the bat that I thought this was also going to be a romance. And like technically there's romance in it because it's about a married couple. But I think from what I've learned from my research that a romance is defined by two characters like getting together and these characters are already together so i liked that i don't think there's enough married couples in fantasy and this was a healthy married couple which is always nice to see you know a married couple that has problems but ultimately is supporting each other that was great so i do feel like the cover does explain how it is because it is kind of like a softer book but it also doesn't because it's not a romance. I feel like that would turn people off who would maybe normally like this book. I thought the world building was done very well in this book. Uh, it is definitely characterization heavy and not plot heavy. Uh, we have characters kind of on the run and um, really kind of delving in and exploring grief and anxiety and trauma. And I thought the main character was done very, very well. Um, what's actually interesting to me is when I read the author's note at the end, or the acknowledgements, this story was my love letter to Cottagecore with a dash of dark, but it eventually also became a story about anxiety, grief, and loss. I wrote this book during a season of sorrow and difficulties, which made it mean so much more to me. I wasn't surprised at all to read that. I, as I was reading it, I thought, man, this is such a good representation of like depression or anxiety, loss, grief. That is what this book is about. And it's done very, very well through the main character. And so hearing that the author realized that and also was like and I was kind of writing it during a hard time myself I think it shows in the most positive way because I do think so many times I was reading this it was like oh man that hits hard like that is such a good portrayal of those things now as I mentioned briefly earlier this book is very purple prose which sometimes really worked for me and sometimes didn't at all uh, the first page was like really hard when I read it I was like Whew, okay this is like kind of like different prose and I'm not against purple prose some of my um, favorite books have been very purpley I've heard that people think the 10,000 doors of January is super purpley um, this book reminded me a little bit actually of a book I read recently Hamnet last year which was very purple prose where like when the prose was good it was fantastic it was so moving it was very emotional and I got really lost in the poetry of it but then every once in a while you just reach a paragraph and you're like what <laughs> Did that need to be described that intensely? <laughs> Doesn't seem so. So it was definitely like hit or miss for me, but I will say when it was working and I, I got into the story, it really pulled me in. But yes, there were some times it definitely took me out of the story. I think the main character in the story, Marana, is the most fleshed out. I think she's very good. I do quite like her husband, Percy. Sometimes he felt a little flat to me. I wish we had like a little bit more with him. I also feel that the villain was kind of interesting because the villain was very one note and I kind of accepted this as the story moved on because I was like, maybe that's just kind of what the story needs. It's not about the villain. It's about Morana's, you know, internal struggles. But then at the end, something kind of happened to give more depth to the villain, but it felt like a little too late. So I kind of wish either that part had almost been left out or it had been more like further given him more characterization, if that makes sense. Like one or the other, I kind of didn't like the middle ground. So I thought a few of the characters were kind of like a little surface level, uh, but I thought Morana was done very well. Now I know I'm saying um, some negative things about this book, but I wanted to put that out front because it's like, I recognize there are flaws in this book. I recognize the prose is too prosy sometimes. And I recognize that some of the characters fall flat. I, you know, I recognize these little issues about it, but ultimately I just really enjoyed it. <laughs> like ultimately I just, I liked it. And when I had hit about like page 140, it took me a little bit of time to get to page 150 or so. And then I read like the last 200 pages in like two sittings. I was swept along and I was realizing I was just kind of getting lost in this book. I wasn't trying to read it fast to finish it. I was reading it out of like, I was enjoying it. and 
feeling with our character and feeling the grief and feeling the loss and feeling the anxiety. And again, when I read that author's note or acknowledgments, I was like, yes, I, I can tell. I can tell that this came from like a really true place because I was feeling it. And so it's kind of one of those hard books to rate because it's like, I see that there are flaws in it. And, and if people point those out to me, I'd agree with them, I see them. But ultimately I connected with the book and felt with the characters and felt that it was a really beautiful portrayal of some of those heavy topics and that it really, I think, accomplished what it set out to do. And to be clear here, there's also some very dark elements in here, like necromancy kind of and um, bone magic. And, you know, it's not just like some floofy thing, to be clear. Uh, yeah, so I was just really taken surprised by this book. I enjoyed it a lot. I really got caught away in the majesty and poetry of it, you know, once I was about a third through. There are some issues with flatness and prose, but I, I did really enjoy this book. And so I am giving it a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, those are my first three reviews of the competition. I think it's so interesting that there are three very specific books. I think if you like any of those niches, I would definitely recommend checking them out. Definitely nothing bad here, just varying on working for me. And I'm very excited to get you guys the rest of my reviews probably in the coming months. Let me know which books you've read for SPFBO, what has worked best for you and what hasn't so far in the comments below. And as always, if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe, that's the best way to support me. And if you wanna see what I am currently reading as well as other nerdy rants, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time, bye.